In late 2023, we visited one of the strangest parks we've ever been to. Bajaya Times Square theme park, formerly known as Cosmos World, is an indoor park spread across multiple floors of the Bajaya Times Square Mall in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It wasn't exactly on our radar when visiting Malaysia, but it was near our hotel, cost less than 15 US dollars to enter, and somehow managed to fit a near kilometer long Intamin multi-inversion coaster that was included with entry. With a free afternoon, there was little to lose. At best, we had a good time on the coaster, and at worst, we lost $15. But what we encountered was something we couldn't prepare for. A waterless aquarium, gaudy, bright colored fiberglass props, and an indoor coaster that traversed through a giant pair of flower lips. This is our journey to Bajaya Times Square theme park. Bajaya Times Square is a monstrous building located in Bukit Bintang, Kuala Lumpur, comprised of two 48 story towers connected by a 19 story shopping mall. It is currently the 10th largest building in the world by floor area, with 7.5 million square feet of built-up floor area. Inside are over 1,000 retail shops, 1,200 luxury service suites, 65 food outlets, and of course, Bajaya Times Square theme park. If the building looks big from the outside, it feels even bigger on the inside. Getting to the park is like traversing a maze past multiple different sections, atriums, elevators, staircases, and some form of Kenny Rogers chicken restaurant. But once you arrive at the park, it quickly opens up into a vast indoor space with floor to ceiling glass windows providing a healthy amount of natural light. Surrounding you are multiple levels of attractions and rides, plus a roller coaster that soars through the building at some impressive speeds. But something we noticed rather quickly is that despite the space and the rides, there weren't many people. If anything, there were more workers than there were guests. We headed for the ticket booth where we paid our 15 US dollars plus an additional upcharge of one US dollar for what we were only told was the world's first waterless aquarium. For one dollar, we had to check this out. After handing over the money, we were quickly given our tickets as well as what could only be described as the world's largest park map. And we went inside. Bajaya Times Square theme park is split into two sections. First is Galaxy Station, the land in which you enter into, which is home to all the more thrilling attractions, and Fantasy Gardens, which is the opposite, but also has the roller coaster for some reason. Immediately, the theming catches your eye. It's all around you. It feels like stepping back in time to the period of themed restaurants, oversized props, the works. Sticking out from the walls were giant body parts, huge levers, and more, and this was just in Galaxy Station. The theming in the other half of the park was even stranger. For a place we have never been, it was almost nostalgic and reminded me a lot of Pop Century and All Star Resorts at Walt Disney World, which equally seemed to be stuck in time. But we digress. Where you enter in Galaxy Station can best be described as Upcharge Alley. It's bizarre that some of the first attractions you're exposed to are some in which you need to pay more to experience. There was a haunted house, VR experience, and a shooting range for BB guns, which was surprisingly at a lot of other theme parks in Malaysia, all of which required extra payment to enjoy. But we had a mission. We were desperate to see the waterless aquarium. It spawned so many questions. Aquariums are known for water. How did they remove it? Were we just going to see reptiles, fake fish, empty tanks? Maybe even just dried up, shriveled fish attached to strings? But the answer was none of those. Instead, it was an old friend. The waterless aquarium was full of Pepper's ghost effects. Tens of fake tanks all streaming short looped videos of fish. For a dollar, I'm not complaining, but we're pretty satisfied after a few minutes of this attraction. Watching this video gives you pretty much the exact same experience as being there. Confused, we stumbled back into Galaxy Station and passed several spinner attractions we felt no need to enjoy, including a Music Express called Bubbles Express and the fittingly named Dizzy Izzy. 
Unfortunately, on our visit, the ride we wanted to experience the second most, other than the roller coaster, was the spinning orbit tower, but it was closed for refurbishment, so rather than spinning to the top of the structure, we simply took the stairs up to Fantasy Gardens. Passing the world's most disappointing looking roller skating rink, we ascended to the mainline attraction, the station for Supersonic Odyssey, where we were greeted by staff that look bewildered to actually see guests in the park. Pulling our restraints down only for them to never actually be checked, we were dispatched and straight into the first inversion of the roller coaster. We would be lying if we didn't say there was some trepidation about riding a giant roller coaster in a park that seemingly had its best days behind it. After the mid-course lift hill that made you feel like you were about to hit your head on the roof, you glide through the rest of the strange, part-thrilling, part-meandering layout around two more inversions and through the famed lips and robotic butthole. Despite our expectations being subsonically low, Supersonic Odyssey was actually a great coaster. Did we fear that it might be our last coaster? Yes. Was it good fun? Yes. As mentioned before, Supersonic Odyssey boards in the Fantasy Gardens portion of the park, home to many of the park's more family-friendly attractions. We won't lie, the theme in here is an assault on the senses, filled to the brim with grinning flowers and gigantic neon-coloured foliage, but it's also got this vague nostalgic charm, and that kind of makes sense when you think about it. These themed elements were all the rage back in the early 2000s when this park opened, but in most places, these props and elements would be subjected to the elements. But indoors, you don't have those same problems. Here, these props exist in a sort of living time capsule, drifting through time with little regard for the outside world. Now, most rides here were a little too small for the two of us, but eventually, we landed on the Fantasy Trail train. With no wait and no other guests, we embarked on our private journey around the upper floor of the theme park, passing through several show scenes such as a haunted spider cave and the wall of projected fish that we generally think it was a video stolen from the Waterless Aquarium. All in all, it was a nice little train ride that gave us a lay of the land. However, after disembarking, we felt a little bad for riding the children's attractions, despite there being next to no other children around, so we decided to roam the land a bit more. We encountered a disturbed bee, we got flashbacks to Arthur thanks to the crazy bus, and Luke received validation that he was indeed tall. After a couple more rides on Supersonic Odyssey, our time at Bajaya Times Square theme park was coming to an end. You don't exit where you entered and instead leave through a gift shop in the upper section of the theme park. They had some merchandise here, but it was pretty barren. Overall, despite everything, this park left an impression on us. It lives in our minds rent-free as a strange fever dream of a theme park with the coaster that goes through the giant flower lips. It's full of heart, personality, and a nostalgic early 2000s charm. We know that we will likely never return here in our lives, but we're grateful to have once had a strange afternoon at Bajaya Times Square theme park.